welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Danny, and this is Coffee Break with Danny, where I guarantee if I look in the viewfinder right now, I have lipstick on my teeth. Ready? Ooh, today's gonna be a good day, y'all. All right, so this video is gonna be a little, blah, 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 a little confusing, a little mixed up. You're gonna see a different shirt at different times, but guess what? We're just gonna roll with it. This is a get ready with me after all, so we're gonna keep it a little informal. But before we get into it, I wanna ask you guys a huge favor. If you have a good time, if you like it here, if I made you laugh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, become a panda, turn on the bell for notifications so that you don't miss a post. Although I don't know how reliable that is, probably as reliable as I am at this moment in time. Let's go ahead and get started. This is gonna be a get ready with me where I do very, very, very light coverage on my face. I focus on neutral eyeshadow, neutral blush, neutral highlight, because I wanted to create a look where I could use many different lip colors. And in fact, I show you the four lip colors in this video, so I hope that you guys will look forward to that at the very end. We'll look forward to that at the very end. I do use the e.l.f. Bite Size Shadows for you guys in this look. I use the Thrive Mascara, which you guys know I'm currently obsessed with. And like any and all my videos, all of the products that I use will be listed and linked in the description box below. This video is a little heavy. We talk about the corona again, and we talk about just some personal issues that I'm currently dealing with. So if you guys want to kick back, relax with a girlfriend, do our makeup at the same time, or maybe we're doing the dishes together, I don't know, folding laundry, if you want me to keep you company for the next, I don't know, like 45 minutes, all you have to do is keep on watching. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get started. I want to keep this get ready with me as short and efficient as possible. Is that going to be the case? I don't know, but I just really want to focus on a very neutral, very simple look. Nothing crazy because the point of me putting on makeup today is to be able to create a makeup look that will allow me to use many different lip colors for some pictures that I want to post on Instagram. So we're going to just try. I do not want to wear primer today, which might be a little risky, but we're going to just, we're going to go for it. Let's get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is take the Charlotte Tilbury little miniature compact thingamajigger to focus that on this area of my eyes. A lot of you guys said that the shade after this one, this is the shade Fair, is actually not that dark, that it just looks darker on the website. And I featured this in my haul, I believe, my Sephora VIB haul. The fact that I don't remember where or when I purchased this makeup is embarrassing, y'all. But I have been uh, quarantine shopping a little bit more than I should be, honestly. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of uh, really hard conversations that I need to have with myself about my shopping habits. So it's a pretty nice coverage, isn't it? It's a, it's a pretty nice coverage. It's pretty nice coverage. And then what I want to do is actually focus these two products as like my base product. I don't want to get too crazy with what's going on. I want my skin to be able to breathe. I want sort of like a luminous look. This is a little bit too dark, but I love the luminos luminosity, the luminousness <laughs> of this product. This is um, a foundation from Osmosis. My friend Brianna told me about it and it's amazing. This is in the shade Natural Medium. It's a little bit too dark for me right now, but I really like it. And then I love the coverage of this product from Too Faced, the Born This Way Concealer, but I think this one may be just a little bit too light. So I'm thinking, this is how my brain works. I'm thinking I just kind of like play with the two together and it'll be fine because that's, that would be fair, wouldn't it? But hey, guess what? Right now, life isn't fair right now, you guys. We're just kind of, oh, actually this, this is a really good color match for me right now. However, the coverage is like really intense and I really don't. You know what I should have done? I should have mixed it with um, like a sunscreen or something. That would have been perfect. Did you see I didn't go in with the osmosis at all. This is just the Too Faced concealer. Me closing the one eye. You're welcome. <sighs> we keep up with traditions around here, you guys. So I'm going to figure out or I'm going to have to figure out a way how to make my skin not look so matte because this concealer is like super, super, super matte. Maybe that's a good thing. I've been kind of really oily recently. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's my diet. Maybe it's 
the lockdown. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but my skin's been pretty, 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 pretty shiny. Um, I have been using a new sunscreen. I'm on a sunscreen kick right now, so I'm trying to mix it up. And I'm currently using one from Paula's Choice. And so far, so good. I have to kind of break into the sunscreens that came in that Sephora favorites kit for my haul. But several of you guys commented about that sunscreen from Paula's Choice, and I just so happened to actually have it in my stash of makeup. What are the chances? So I was like, I can't let this opportunity go by. If I actually have it and I don't use it, who am I? So I've been using it, and it feels just like a very normal humectant type product. Nothing crazy. This is the Creaseless Concealer from Tarte. This one is like the total opposite of Shape Tape. So like Shape Tape is super matte, super, super, super like almost like, um, I, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a super full coverage matte concealer. This one is like a super full coverage, super humectant, very glowy concealer. This is not good for those of you with a lot of um, texture or lines of expression under your eyes, but I really like it because I tend to over powder my under eyes. Well, I tend to over powder everything, <laughs> but um, I tend to over powder my under eyes and I feel like this is a good way of controlling that monster. <laughs> So the last time that we chatted on a get ready with me, I was telling you guys like, what is going on where you live? What's going on in your state or in your country during the pandemic? Are you guys opening up? What's the status of your lives? And so many of you said, hey, we're slowly opening up because summer's here and people need to go out and do fun stuff. But the majority of you guys said, I'm keeping myself and my babies home. We're staying home. We're protecting our family. I, it was nice, it was nice, it was refreshing to hear that. It was refreshing to know that, you know, so many of us are on the same page, but at the same time, it's just getting to the point where I'm like, how emotionally sustainable is this really, you know? And what I'm getting at is we're social creatures. We're all experiencing trauma right now. This pandemic is actual trauma inducing. We're gonna go in with Pat McGrath Labs, that under eye powder that is also from that haul. So many of you guys told me, hey Danny, just give it a chance. It's actually really, really good. I don't like how it feels when I use a brush to set it. So maybe if I use my beauty blender, I'll like it more. Oh yeah, that's nice. Okay, so I know a lot of people are saying, you know, when I was your age, I had to go to war. Or Anne Frank hid in a cupboard for seven years. You know, I understand all of those things. And I know that we tend to whine and complain often about things that are stressing us out. But I think that we do it as a way to cope or feel better. But I also believe that this is a different generation. You know, we've grown up with different things, different luxuries, different expectations, different education, just different everything from even like, what what was your first device? You know, mine was a beeper or a pager, or whatever. Um, you know, and then after that, we're like the sidekick flip phones and the razors. And my kids say the olden days when I talk about stuff like that. I found my razor the other day and my son was like, is this a phone from the olden days? So I just know, I mean, we gotta keep that in mind, you know? Generations change, things change, times are different. We're so connected now, and so I don't know how sustainable staying home this long is, you know? I miss seeing my kids running around at the park, and I miss going, you know, to the zoo once a week or to the water park because we were members. And so I just, I want to make sure that I'm doing right by my kids by the decision that I'm making for them. Like today, I had to go buy groceries at Target by myself and it was such a vast spectrum of what people feel safe with. I couldn't decide what I wanted to do for brows because I was thinking I could do something very light like that um, Brow Babe, I don't even know what it's called. It's like my favorite thing to use during the summer. It's like all in one in just one little magical wand. 
but I think I'm going to do e.l.f. Um, brow pencil and taupe and just a clear brow gel, whichever I decide to use. Um, so what was I telling you guys? Probably makes sense to bring you guys in closer to do my brows, right? I don't know if you guys will get a good view anyway because I'm kind of on an angle, but it's okay. We're just here to, to chat and be friends. So I went to Target to get groceries and the spectrum of comfort levels was so confusing. You had a mom that had her stroller. It was like a double stroller with her babies in it. Barefoot babies in a stroller. And none of them were wearing, well, they weren't wearing shoes, but they also weren't wearing masks. And so it was this very comfortable sense, you know, very liberating. I saw her, and I know you guys are probably thinking I judged her. No, I was just like, oh, that must feel good to get to that point where you're like, oh, I can just be. Um, is it irresponsible? I don't know. Like, it's not like Corona's gone away, so maybe, but that was one side of the spectrum. And then there was another person who had like a painter's suit on and goggles and gloves and a mask, you know, and it was just, he was covered completely from head to toe. I go with a mask and I have hand sanitizer. And so I touch whatever I need to touch. I load whatever I need to load and then I put on hand sanitizer when I get in the car and I take off my mask. I see so many conflicting reports about the virus and how it survives in the air for five hours and stuff like that. So I just, I play it safe as much as I can. I stay home the majority of the week, like my kids don't go out. I think I'm just getting to that point where I'm like, I want to learn what my new normal is. Is my new normal going to the park with a mask on or not going to the park at all? Is my new normal just writing it out until, you know, Thanksgiving? Like what is our what is our new normal? And I think if I'm going to learn anything through this pandemic, it's going to be that I can't control everything that's going on. You know, I can't I have to be comfortable with living in an undefined gray area. I can't always have an answer. I can't always have a schedule. I can't always, you know, plan. I can't always do things the way that I wish I could do them. And so if I've learned anything during this pandemic, besides the fact that we need to take care of one another and we need to be selfless and we have to take care of others and we have to be kind, I already knew all of those things, but I think personal growth wise, this pandemic has taught me that I can't control things, you know, that I have to be okay with uncertainty and I have to be okay with waking up and just making it to the end of the one day and then trying again the next day and then trying again the next day. I have to be okay with the belief of one day at a time and things being out of my control. And it has been a very hard lesson to learn, but it is not impossible and it has made me feel a little more liberated, you know, like I can actually breathe. I'm not always on top of everything because so I can't really do anything anyway. We're going to go in with just Essence Clear Brow Gel. We're going to get that in there real good. My eyebrows have been kind of nice recently. I was about to, to call Claria, my microblader, to kind of have, have her touch them up but I've been really happy with the way they look. So I'm like, maybe I'll just leave them alone for now. It's not like it's essential, am I right? Let's move on to eyeshadow and I'm gonna use, I'm thinking uh, this little guy right here. This is the Bite Size Eyeshadow in Carnival Candy. And I'm gonna reach over for this flat shader brush. And we're gonna do something super simple because like I told you guys, I wanna do um, four different lip colors. Ooh, should I do it in this video? I wasn't planning on it, but I think that might be a good opportunity. So we're gonna apply that to the brow bone. This is not a very bright shade if you have light to medium complexion. So it is a really good base color. Like if you wanted to just do this entire area, it'd be really good for that. But I just want it to kind of smooth out underneath my brow bone. I do not like that super chiseled out concealer look. You know which one I'm talking about? When um, people apply the concealer and just kind of like really carve out under their brows. I, I don't like how that looks on me. I think it makes my brows look abnormally arched and 
my brows don't match. Like, <laughs> I'm not the girl with matching brows. I'm the girl that has like a, a cousin and a step sister brow, you know? Okay, now we're gonna go in with a big fluffy blending brush. And let's see, which color of these strikes my fancy? Oh, there's so many, so many options. I think I'm gonna do this one and then we'll go in with like a softer brown. We're gonna go in with this one here. This is from the palette Berry Bad. And that's going to be from lid to transition. Just like no rhyme or reason, okay? And I haven't done any powder on my lower lash line in case I have fallout. So y'all need to send me your prayers. Uh, but hopefully we don't make a mess over here. So I don't know when you guys are gonna see this video and I don't know if you guys watch my weekend vlogs. It's been something that I talk about. I'm not really shy or embarrassed to talk about it, but I do have a therapist. She is awesome and wonderful and I really like her. And she's really helped me understand the way that I am and why I am the way I am. I am confident in who I am my convictions, my beliefs, why I love the way I love and why I take care of my family the way I do. And, and I'm, I'm firm in, in my confidence of how I am, but it's always nice to understand why you become the way you are, you know, to really fully understand the coding behind your program, you know, your software. Why are you the way you are? Like, why are you this way? They say like, everything always goes back to your parents, past trauma or abuse, right? So I've been really just doing that deep dive search. I, I have been very disappointed in myself with how I have behaved during this quarantine. You know, I have been very frustrated. I have been very overwhelmed, but not in the way that you would think, not in the way where I would say, hey, I'm just, I'm so overwhelmed at like the distance learning and being home all the time and everyone needing from me. No, it's not even that. It's just, I've spent so much time with myself and I haven't enjoyed it. I, I'm not happy with how I am or how I do certain things. Anyway, so it's been nice to have someone to talk to and just really understand, you know, why we are the way we are. The other day I saw a post on Instagram that said, um, you know, people aren't born funny. People aren't born a comic. People aren't born witty and sarcastic and, and hilarious just because they are. They're made that way because of really strong, hard, emotional baggage and trauma. Same color, different brush, lower lash line. And it really resonated with me because, you know, my mom calls me her payasito. Like she says, oh, you make everyone laugh and you make everyone happy. And it's true, but sometimes I don't want to be. And sometimes I'm in a really, really dark space in a really bad, negative place. And it just, it confuses me because I'm like, how can I be so happy and then be so, I, I don't know, I can't, I don't even wanna say lonely or depressed cause it's not an extreme, it's just, it's enigmatic almost or like a dichotomy. And so looking back and having someone to talk to, to kind of like pick, nit, nitpick, no nitpick is bad, take apart. To really kind of, we're gonna go in with this color here. This is from Pumpkin Pie. Thanks, Melissa, for sending this to us. Um, and so we're gonna take a different shade of brush. How many brushes am I using? So, so much for like an easy makeup look, you guys. So it's been nice to understand, you know, how I have responded to events in my life and, and how I was raised. And it helps me understand why I do st things a certain way. And the good thing about that is that if it's something that I don't like about myself, understanding why I do it can help me unlearn and relearn a new way of life, right? So if you guys have noticed, and I know you have because you always tell me in the comments, how is your house so organized? How is your house so clean? You know, you have small children and you have dogs and your house is always so orderly. For me, it's a thing about controlling my own space. You know, I, I grew up having very little control or say over anything from how I dressed to where I went to who wanted to be my friends, you know, stuff like that. And so 
feeling so out of control all the time, you just develop these ways of coping with life. You create your own little safe space or your own little safe bubble of just handling yourself in a certain way or living your life in a certain way. So I may not be able to control if Sally or Susie or Jerry want to be my friend, but I can control how I load the dishwasher. I can't control, I'm going to go in with that same shader brush and then like a darker shade. Let's do this one here. You know, I can't control, just silly examples. You know, you can't control uh, past trauma that happens in your life like my assault when I was 21. But now I can control, I don't know, when I do laundry or when I um, load the dishwasher or a schedule or things like that. And so I feel like it just became this way or tool for me to feel like I was in control when I really had very little control over anything, right? Like, I mean, seriously, if you think about your day to day, how much control do you actually have in your life? Okay, let's go in with uh, truffles. And I'm gonna take probably this color here and just focus that over here. So yeah, if you think about it day to day with everything going on and stuff like that, um, how much control do you, do you actually have? Especially right now during the pandemic. Do you really have all that much control? You really can't. I mean, I went to the store today and I was looking for specific things and there wasn't any specific things that were on my list. And so it's hard because I had a shopping list and I had meal planning, but if the stuff that I need that's on my list is not at the store, like there goes my whole plan. It goes, right? Like, oh my God, I'm totally out of control because it's not, it's on my list. I have to get it what's on my list but you can't. And so I think out of this pandemic, the most amazing thing that's to happen to me is realizing I need to learn to just be blurry, gray, uncomfortable. I just have to accept it, not tolerate it. You guys know how I feel about that. You can't tolerate things. You just have to really accept it. Um, and so it's been, it's been a crazy blessing in disguise. It's been a really, it's been a really tough time, but it's also been a very productive season in my life. I can only speak for myself. All right, you guys, enough of that deep conversation. I need to jump off camera. I'm gonna do my lashes and then I'll be right back and we can finish everything else. I just smacked my face. <laughs> All right, you guys, so my eyeshadow went a little bit overboard. It's really not what I was expecting. I have a lot of mascara smears on my lids. I just kind of let them hang out, let them completely dry, and then I'll remove them with a Q-tip, like a dry Q-tip. It'll come right off, but we're just gonna leave it alone for now so that we don't mess it up. Let's finish the rest of our face. I'm gonna go in with the e.l.f. Mineral Bronzer in tan toffee. <laughs> tan. Stop it, e.l.f. <laughs> you know, just the right things to say. I am a little hesitant to use my favorite brush because I just washed it and you guys know how I feel about clean makeup brushes. Always betraying your love. I just, I feel like they don't work as good when they're really, really clean, you know? They're not as blendy or as easy to blend stuff out. I really like this bronzer. I think it's like a dollar. It comes in several different shades. Well, you know what? I'm so far removed from like the drugstore world. I don't even know if it's still available. A lot of brands like e.l.f. have so many products in rotation that they just swap out that I, I wouldn't even know. I do want to get a little bit more involved or more active in like the drugstore makeup just because I don't know. It, I find myself struggling when it comes to drugstore makeup just because the really big brands are usually not cruelty free. So it gets a little frustrating, but I do need to make that cognizant effort to, to really focus on that and, and try and find some alternatives for the products that I like. Because y'all, we don't know during these uncertain times, like I'm okay now, but next year, I don't know what the backlash of this whole COVID situation is gonna be and how my work is and all that stuff. 100% pure, pretty naked blush. Apples of the cheeks. Today is not a good day to give me blush because I'm gonna go overboard. 
But yeah, who knows? I mean, right now it's good, right now it's okay. I am self-employed, so it can be a little stressful. I always make sure to have a fallback plan. I'm pretty scrappy, I'm pretty resourceful. I've always had more than one job and, and I can usually be pretty good at figuring things out. But if I can plan a little bit better, there I go, controlling things. If I can plan a little bit better so there are no surprises next year, then, then why not, you know? Especially when I got two little misters that I gotta take care of. Plus Wesley, man, Wesley alone, his doctor bills are gonna make me go broke, I swear to goodness. But speaking of Wesley, you guys, he had his three month follow up with his um, specialist about his Cushing's disease and diabetes, and he came back with the most, with the best possible results he could have come back from. So he's basically, he's basically at normal given his pre-existing medical conditions. So he's as normal as he could be. I was like, Diosito, oh my gosh, thank you so much. You know, of, of everything that's going on, of all the sadness, of all the heartbreak, of all the uncertainty right now, that is great news. And so, Sleek Makeup Solstice Palette, the peach shade, it just, it felt so good to hear that. It felt so good to know that he's he's stable, you know, because that's really all it means is he is stable. Given his medical condition, his medical history or whatever, he is stable. So for now, we're going to enjoy it. Who knows how long it'll last? It doesn't matter, but for now, we're gonna focus on it, we're gonna enjoy it, and uh, we're gonna be happy that everything we've been doing, all that hard work we put in, all that insistence and persistence and tenacity to get answers, finally, worked. All right guys, we're gonna do lip colors now. I picked out four that I wanna do. The first one that we're gonna do is a nude. This is from Too Faced and it's called Sugar Daddy. <laughs> okay. So this is one of my favorites. One of my favorite pictures of all time that I ever took of myself. I know that's gonna make me sound like a cocky, horrendous human, but listen, you gotta be your own cheerleader. So one of my favorite pictures that I ever took of myself on Instagram is wearing this lip color. And I think, you know what's sad? I think the reason that it made such a impression on me is because my mom made such a big deal about it. Like she screenshot it, she texts me, she's like, oh my God, you look so beautiful. What color is this? I need it. So anyway, this is Sugar Daddy. What do we think? It's nice, right? It's so comfortable too, but it does, if you wear it for a very long time, it does break up a little bit. So it's nice to wear, it's better to wear it with a lip liner if you can, but that's the color right there. It's more of like a pinky, peachy nude. <laughs> okay, let's change it. Sorry guys, I had to change my shirt because there was a lot happening with it and it was gonna conflict with all my color choices. Now we're gonna move on to purple or mauve and we're going to use Stila Patina. This is more of like a mauve pink. This is as purple as I get. If you guys go back to my channel when I just started, I used to use Barney purple along with many other questionable choices. <laughs> so Patina from Stila or number three is our next choice. So I think we'll classify this as our pink shade, maybe. This is a liquid lipstick, so you gotta work quickly. And you don't have to do a very thick layer. I genuinely forgot how much I love this color. Wow, it is so pretty. It's one of those pinks that everyone needs to try. You cannot be a makeup lover without ever trying Patina from Stila. Such a beautiful color. I don't know why I stopped using it, to be honest. I have so much makeup, or rather, I got rid of about 75% of my makeup. I mean, a good majority. And this is one of the few that I kept. So I think I knew deep down inside the value of this lipstick. I wish it came in a regular lipstick. Liquid lipsticks aren't necessarily like my go-to type of formulation, but Stila and Smashbox do have my favorite liquid lipstick formula, so there's that. This actually kind of reminds me of Backtalk from Urban Decay. So if you're looking for a similar dupe that is not in liquid lipstick version, Backtalk from Urban Decay is probably very, very, it's probably as close as you're gonna get to it. Now we're gonna use I Heart This from ColourPop. When I had a hot pink lipstick, 
here somewhere. Uh, Urban Decay has a really good one. I don't remember the name, but it's like the best hot pink cut ever. So we don't. And I wanted to include hot pink, so we're going to use all lip liner. This is going to take me a hot minute, so BRB. <laughs> what do we think? I just love a classic hot pink. Like, hot pink with like a splash of tone down. Because this could be a little bit more electric, but I love that it's a contained... I like to let my hair down a little bit on occasion when it's strategically planned and there's definitely no spontaneity involved in it. <laughs> it's a safe hot pink. <laughs> you guys, 2020, I need to become more fearless and take bigger risks. I'm such a chicken. I'm the biggest wuss. Everything has to be calculated and planned out and I need to start wearing hot pink more, even if it's a little electric and if it doesn't match my outfit and if I didn't plan for it, I need to whip out the hot pink. I need to, I need to find that fearlessness. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I don't know how wearing this hot pink lip liner turned into a talk about empowerment, but, but here we are. <laughs> We're gonna go in with Urban Decay's Gash on top of this. I figured it won't make a big difference because they're both very dark. So we're doing it. Ready? Oh yeah, I love this color. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Gash, the lip liner, is my favorite. This is a cream formula, so you want to be super careful because it is soft. You'll get red everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, Gash, what do we think? I am a big fan of a red lip with very simple makeup. There have been times where I don't wear any makeup whatsoever except mascara and a red lip. But a glossy or a shiny red lip is something that I try to stay away from because I end up with red all over my teeth, my tongue, my gums, like everywhere. It turns into a very bleedy, <laughs> pun intended, mess. So as much as I like Gash in the lipstick formula, my go-to is the 24-7 pencil in Gash the pencil in Gash because it locks into place and it doesn't smear or get on your teeth or anywhere. But I wanted to do something a little different out of my comfort zone. I don't usually wear a glossy red anything, but I wanted to show you guys. I think it's important that you really lock down a makeup routine that doesn't uh, force you to use a specific lip color, you know? So find your favorite neutrals that can really just go in any direction so that if you're in the mood for a turquoise lip or a black lip or a burgundy lip, a red lip, a nude lip, a, a, just a naked chapstick lip, that you can do it, you know? And so I wanted to do something where I just use neutral shadows, but that they would not compete with any lip color that I decided to use. Now, the truth is that I did want to do an Instagram post inspired by my friend Claire Ashley Beauty. She has the most amazing Instagram. If you guys don't follow her, I'll link her down below. She did a post where she did four different pictures, same makeup, same shirt, same everything, but four different pictures with four different lip colors. And it was really cool to see the varying complexity of a face look just by switching out the lip color. So I thought it was really inspiring and I wanted to do something like that. I wasn't gonna include the four lip colors in this Get Ready With Me, but I thought, mm, why not? The conversation was pretty heavy anyway. Might as well make it fun. <laughs> anyway, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like always, any other products that you saw that I used, that I showed you, will be listed and linked in the description box of this video. Huge favor if you guys had a good time, if you liked it here, if you found it entertaining, if you learned anything, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell for notifications become a panda join the crew we're kind of fun around here uh, and I think that's it I love you guys so much and you know what to do if you found this video useful entertaining and learned something please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and until next time this coffee break is over bye guys